Club Nation. Let's go, I guess. This is about to be one for the books. <laughs> this is about to be one for the books. It's going to get spicy in the chat. As always, we just uh, ask that you are respectful of others, whether that's Alyssa or Jake or myself or yes. any of the players or people that we we're talking about. Keep it away from personal attacks and you won't be banned. There you go. You've been warned. Welcome into the Toyota Lounge driven by your front range Toyota stores. Toyota, the official vehicle of DNVR. It's DNVR Buffs Primetime. We're presented by Illegal Pete's. Everyone's go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. Cormani McLean. Yes. Where is he? <laughs> He's actually in Boulder right now. In his car, apparently. <laughs> I guess so. Um, all right. Well, give us the news, Jake, and then we will give you our uh, okay. reaction. So we talked about Cormani last week. Um, tried to... Uh, I thought we did a pretty good job of explaining what was going on as yeah. much as we could. I thought so, too. And then today, uh, his mom puts out this tweet. Got to be somewhere where you're appreciated and not just tolerated. God, take the lead. We right behind you. Carmani then posted his best George Bush impression on Instagram. Um, that's where we're at. He essentially said, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, I think. Yes. Um... And then you had Polkway, who has been on this show, yep. uh, very tied into the Polk County football scene. Mm -hmm. uh, he posted, I want to get it right. It's going to take me a second. Um, the most declarative of anything we've heard so far. He said, give me one more half second. Receiving word that former five-star cornerback Cormani McLean is set to enter the transfer portal. Teams I'd look out for to land McLean, USC, Utah, LSU, South Carolina, Louisville, and USF. He was then quote tweeted, just trying to paint the whole picture here, mm -hmm. then quote tweeted by Folsom Frenzy Podcast, friends of the show as well, mm -hmm. who said, Cormani buzz, parentheses, these are just rumors right now. He then quote tweeted that quote tweet and said, indeed, just rumors. Nothing has been confirmed from him or his family at this point. So this is where we stand right now. Um... It certainly feels like this is the end of what has been a, a roller coaster ride of an experience with Cormani McLean in Boulder. Yeah, definitely does feel like that. Um, and I have mixed feelings. Um, How could you not? Yeah, the, the 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 original reaction for me that I put uh, in our chat was just like, what a bummer, you know. Because Cormani is incredibly gifted, mm -hmm. incredibly gifted, uh, and if I'm gonna have, to, we're gonna say this a lot. If he is transferring, uh, it'll be a bummer that it didn't work out here for whatever reasons. You know, I'm sure there'll be there's three sides of the story, right? One side, the other side, and the truth. But it's a bummer that you know someone that has that much talent wasn't on the same wavelength as the best player ever at that position. And it just never clicked. It, it's like, you know, when a drawer comes out and you got to like get it on the, <laughs> yeah. on the right path. And like, for whatever reason, they just couldn't get the drawer onto the tracks. Yes. Um, and that's a bummer for me. Um, the other side is, Okay, well, this has been going on for a while now. You know, it started with the original Where is Cormani? Why isn't he on campus yet? <laughs> right. Uh, then there was the months of he's still trying to find his sea legs, you know, the altitude, that sort of thing. Then there was the why hasn't he played part of this? Yeah. Then there was the exciting part, right? Right. Comes in against USC, shows some really exciting stuff. You've got Travis Hunter coaching him from the sideline. Um, and then, you know, kind of peaked there for his on the field stuff. And then it felt like the second that the season ended, we were right back into what's going on. Where is he? What's wrong? Um, and so, well, then we built a little bit of momentum again in the spring. There was some thought that he's getting on track. It sounds like Cormani's actually coming along. Yep. And then, um, here we are. Here we are indeed. Um, 
like I said, just disappointing. Super talented kid. Uh, and this is something that I put on Twitter, but I want to make sure everyone hears. No matter who it is, if someone is going to hit the portal, whether it's Cormani or Jacob Page or someone else, yep. let's not do the good riddance or who is that? Never heard of him. Obviously, right. that wouldn't happen with Cormani, but you know what I mean. There's no need to take pot shots on the way out, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't work out for everyone. Everyone has their own reason for entering the portal. Maybe someone didn't give it 100% at Colorado, and that's why they're entering the portal. Mm -hmm. Most people, including us sometimes, don't know the reason why people are leaving. Um, but we don't need to take shots at them on their way out. I say if you've come to Boulder and you committed here and you you know, made the decision to wear the black and gold in Colorado across your chest, uh, you deserve respect. You deserve a tip of the cap and a best of luck on your way out. So that I just I really hope that everyone and it's never going to happen with everyone, but I hope people just uh, treat these guys with respect on their way out. They're young men uh, who are trying to do what's best for them. Absolutely. We see all the other fan bases who stoop to some pretty low levels when it comes to anything to do with Colorado. Let's not be like them. Just simple and plain right there. Let's not be like them. Let's yep. be better. And look, we've talked about this before, and it's important to do these things also and wish these players well because the players who are interested see this. The yeah, players yeah, yeah. who are still in the portal or thinking about coming to Colorado, they see this. The recruits see that. So don't paint the fan base or yourselves in a negative light when it's completely avoidable when these things, these inevitable things happen where players are just going to enter the portal. We had seven. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk shit about someone to your buddies? Go right sure. ahead. But there's no need to uh, publicly go after these guys. Jake, just your kind of initial takeaways from the seeming end of all of this. Okay. Um, let's look at Jordan Seaton. Look at how Coach Prime has talked about him. Uh, you see him on the field practicing a lot in, with the first team. Look at how social treats him. Um, not talking about like the general like social media. Like He is thrown out there on the CU Buffs football social page all the time. He had a locker tour today. These are the types of players that you want when they come in as five-star players. We never really saw that from Cormani. I feel like it's been, you know, again, this isn't official yet, but these signs have been thrown out there for quite a while. The way Coach Prime's always talked about him, uh, especially in public, about what Cormani needs to do to do better, and he flat out says pretty much everything. Yeah. So, not surprised. Yeah, and, and you know, obviously you want to be patient and you want to hope for these guys that there's a aha moment coming around the corner. And this mm -hmm. goes back to last year, you know, like this isn't speculation. This is Coach Prime saying, what can you do better? Show up to meetings, watch film, you know, all of the yes. things that you expect um, from any player, but especially a player, you know, that you're expecting to start. And I've mentioned this several times on the show, but I always go back to uh, a 12 talks with Travis Hunter. Mm -hmm. And he was actually talking about Omari and Miller and what he can be and the potential that he has. And he said, yeah, he's just kind of had the same problem as Cormani, mm -hmm. maturity. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, it was... It was a maturity thing that everyone was hoping and rooting for Cormani to, to get it together. And I will continue to do that. Sure. Um, because whether he actually transfers or this is just, you know, another step in the saga, mm -hmm. um, I'll, be, I'll be rooting for what's best for him. And obviously, you know, everyone, including myself and you and anyone else, has to have that moment in their life where they're like, okay, it's time to grow up. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's just we've been playing a waiting game the last 14 months in various ways, waiting on him to decide on his commitment, waiting on him to come to Boulder, waiting on him to be on the practice field, to look like a five-star player on the practice field. It's just been a lot that's added up. Um, but, yeah, obviously we wish him the best, and he's going to get another shot somewhere. Hopefully he's able to take advantage of his opportunity if he enters the transfer portal, um, and we'll see what happens from here on out. Yep, uh, and for those of you just tuning in, um, the vibes, I guess I'll say, on uh, on social media now, right now, are that Cormani McLean uh, is looking like he's going to transfer. 
the most concrete thing we've gotten so far is from Polkway, who I believe was maybe first on Cormani coming to Colorado. I mean, we we had uh, Landlin on the show. Yeah. He spoke about his relationship with Cormani, how close they were. Like he knows Cormani. So he's been in, you know, he's been on the, you know, the Cormani. Yeah beat if you will and and had a lot of news on it he mm-hmm. said receiving word that former five-star cornerback cormani mcclain is set to enter the transfer portal uh and then mentioned some teams that he thought would be in the mix uh, so nothing official yet from cormani or from hayes fawcett or yep. whoever um but it feels like we are trending in that direction stay tuned um we'll see what happens in the next few days if we get an official word, um, but yeah, we had seven more players into the portal yesterday too. Yesterday and today, I guess. Uh, right after we got off the air yesterday, um, we'll get back to him. But Jaden Milliner Jones entered the portal, and then Savion Washington finally entered the portal. I know a lot of people in the chat have been talking about that. Isaiah Jada entered the portal. DB Harris, David Connor, Tarvaris Dawson officially entered the portal. We've known that one for a few months. And then Jacob Page entered the portal. Seven players. We told you it was coming. Yeah, absolutely. And we have... Uh, everyone that watches this show knows exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, we have officially hit what's going on in Colorado season. Yep. Which is always the first day of the portal, or really even the first week of the portal. Because national outlets and reporters and whoever knows there's engagement to be farmed by tossing people uh, a little bit of raw meat when it comes to you can hate on coach prime about this Uh, and they know that there's hundreds of weirdos foaming at the mouth waiting for that meat to hit the ground Mm -hmm. Um, so we're always gonna we're gonna deal with this every single portal period forever uh, but of course, those who are tapped in and understand know that every single portal period, Colorado has gotten better. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and this is not to besmirk any of the players. Great word, by the way. Uh, <laughs> any job. of the players who are entering the portal, but no projected starters yet. Um, and, you know, Tarvarish, uh, Tarvarish made plays. Um, Savion Washington was a starter last year. Would have been a mm-hmm. nice piece to have depth wise. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some other guys in there that maybe had a moment or two, but Miles Slusher obviously right. had his moments. But you look at the guys that are going out so far, and you can easily see. And Cormani McLean would obviously be a big, big name to add to that as well. But you can obviously see, okay. Colorado wants to add players. You know, they've spoken today to the one of the top players in the portal, the running back from Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Uh, Colorado wants to add players. They need scholarships. Last I heard, uh, they were down to three scholarships before this current uh, group entered the portal. So to get better, uh, you have to have a place to put guys. Yep. Uh, and this is just kind of part of the process. For sure. Um, really, I think the only one that hurt um, of these official transfers, these seven guys, Jaden Millen or Jones, though, the young freshman uh, came in, I think really impressed Coach Prime. He mentioned him early on, got on the field early on, uh, especially as we started to you know, lose some of the safeties to attrition and just injury uh, later in the season last year. He came in and really showed flashes of a good young player, so... That one's going to be a little tough, but again, we've talked about safety being one of, if not the deepest positions on this team for since Coach Prime's got here, basically. Yeah, definitely. Um, man, I was excited for for JMJ. Mm-hmm. Um, felt like he he had a really promising career, and he, I think he still does have a really promising career definitely. ahead of him. Um, and as I said earlier, you know, uh, we're normally in the know of big things that are coming around. Um, but in terms of like Jaden Miller Jones or Jacob Page, I don't know why those guys are transferring. Yeah. Um, and and Jaden is especially one I, I don't know. There's a myriad of reasons, though, why a guy would transfer. Uh, and again, wish him the best. I think he's going to be a great football player. I think he just looked at the room and realized, well, Shiloh and Cam are starting. 
uh, if Slush is on his way out, and they're already talking about Omari and uh, Cooper and Carter at safety as well. Preston Hodge is kind of playing all over the place. DJ McKinney's playing all over the place. Travis is in the slot. Like, where do I fit in? For sure. But I think he... I personally think he was going to play. I, I agree. Uh, but maybe, you know, again, I have no idea if Texas called him and said, hey, sure, we're, we'll up whatever you're getting paid NIL-wise or whatever it may be. You, you, know, you just never know. There's just, Like I said, there's a thousand reasons why a guy transfers. Um, in last year, I think there was – Coach Prime, I think, said we didn't lose anyone – that we weren't prepared to lose, or I think he might have even said that we didn't want to lose. Yeah. Uh, except for what was it? Montana, maybe? I, don't I think he might have said, Montana. like, except for Montana, we would have wanted to. There was one player who he said we did we did want to keep him around, but he felt he had a better opportunity elsewhere. Um, maybe the Arizona kid, the Michigan kid. I forget his name already. No, no. Upshaw. He wasn't. It wasn't no. him. Anyways, there's, you know, there's always going to be one or two, at least, unplanned attrition. I don't know if Jaden Miller Jones is one of them. Three offensive linemen in this group, though: David Connor, Isaiah Jada, Savion Washington. That's just—I mean, Coach Prime flat out said it. I can't remember after which game. I might have been UCLA. You go it get new UCLA. offensive linemen. How do you fix the offensive line? You go get new offensive linemen. That's exactly what's happening right here. All the starters from last year out. Uh, three more or two more depth pieces in Connor and Jada out the door now, and I bet we're not done. But that no. also, to your point, opens up scholarships, and if you look at the players who are entering the portal, and we'll get to that in the segment uh, three today too, lots of offensive linemen entering the portal here. Yeah. Can we pivot that to segment two? Are we, sure. are we in a position to do that? I feel yeah. like that's a good segue. Yeah, we can do um, practice today. <coughs> Great comment from... Three. Atlanta, stay focused and informed. 1,160 watching, 135 likes. Hit that like button. Appreciate you for saying that and appreciate everyone who's hit it so far and everyone who's about to hit it right now. Also, subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you're listening. Drop your five-star review. We'd greatly appreciate it. Shout out to our friends over at Toyota. Some of the most reliable and dependable cars out on the roads today. Our Toyotas. You never see them on the side of the road. Um, they're built for anything, too. They got tons of options for whatever your lifestyle is. You want to look a little sporty, they got the Supra. Um, if you want something more economical, they got hybrids. They got the Camry, the Corolla, all that stuff. Or if you're more adventurous, 4Runner, uh, Tundra. And then what do you have? Do you have a 4Runner? I have a RAV4. Oh, RAV4. Yep. I want to upgrade to the 4Runner, though. The new one looks pretty sweet. It looks incredible. You can visit your Front Range Toyota stores at a location near you. AutoNation Toyota, Arapaho and Centennial, Corwin Toyota in Boulder, Groove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson East, or Toyota East in Aurora, and Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Toyota is a proud partner of CU Athletics and the official vehicle of DNVR. Also, shout out to Bet365, the a place where Jake has learned how to game the system, <laughs> will you say? I mean, they taught you how to game the system. They did. Um, well, it's all thanks to their early pay, early money line payouts, which are, I think, in every sport. Basketball, it's 15 points, I believe. At least it was for March Madness. Football, it's 21 or more. Um, but yeah, I like to you know group a bunch of big favorites together on college football Saturdays and like a five seven team or sometimes put it in the money line. They get up 21 or more, that hits. Boom. Would have been nice to have in that Nuggets Spurs game the other night. It probably would have hit for the Nuggets that night. It would have. They were up 23 in yeah. the fourth quarter before yeah, they forgot definitely. they were playing a basketball game. Yep. Uh, anyways, Bet365 is a great place to go and get some great odds and get in on those early bet wins. Uh, of course, you must be 21 plus and physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. That is 1-800-GAMBLER if you need help. By the way, Jake. What's up, bro? Filing my taxes yesterday. Yeah, how'd that go? I told you guys, I, you know, when I'm talking about loving game time, I'm not yeah. lying about how I procrastinate everything. Oh, what time did you submit yours? I, I submitted my taxes at 10.30 p.m. last night. Ooh, I beat you. What did you get a minute? I mean, I'm later than you. I submitted mine. Oh, you're later. I got this email that I submitted it uh, at 
ten fifty nine. Wow. Yeah, we were close. We were <laughs> probably doing it at the same time. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, a thing you have to do now is uh, claim your betting winnings if they're large enough. Mm -hmm. And um, I found a thing on one of the websites that will show me my lifetime scores. No one wants to see that, bro. I was so glad I saw it, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm destroying the sports books. All right. Good on you then, man. I'm actually not destroying them because they're doing just fine, but I, I'm also doing just fine. I'm, I'm up significantly in my career. I mean, I could have guessed that. I've listened to bet shows and mm -hmm. heard your predictions and stuff. You've got a bit of a crystal ball. Some have said that. You're not the first one. <laughs> All right, let's get to portal targets. I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys today to talk about. I don't know if my timeline is just good at showing me the Hayes Fawcett graphics that have Buffs logos on them, but everyone I've seen today has a Buffs logo on it. Yeah. Well, I mean, there were seven in the last since we did the show yesterday. Yeah. So. yeah. First guy, former pit edge Dayon Hayes has entered the portal. A 6'3", 260-pound edge. Uh, he has one year of eligibility remaining. Last year for the Panthers, 12 games played, 45 total tackles, 10.5 TFLs, four sacks, four passes defense, one forced fumble. And he's at Pitt, right? Out of Pitt. So Sam Okunlola's teammate. Sammy Sacks. Yep. Get on the line. Uh, Hayes Fawcett added that he led the ACC in pressure rate in 2023 and was a two-time ACC player of the week last year. This is pretty much as good as a transfer gets in this day and age. Uh, he's only rated a three-star transfer at this time. It was a 2020 recruit, though. Whoa. What? Did you get this uh, Miami running back? Um, I did not. I can get Miami, to him in a second. I'll get it right here while you... Okay. Miami running back Henry Parrish has officially hit the transfer portal. One of the top backs in the portal. His old school Ole Miss will be one to watch. So he transferred from Ole Miss to Miami, might go back to, to Ole Miss. But he's rushed for 2,000 yards in his career with 15 touchdowns. Could use that. Um, next, I would, next guy will do another running back. That's Dallin Hayes. Running back out of Ohio State. Yep. This kid was a 2022 four-star recruit out of Memphis, Tennessee. He committed to Ohio State, was a part of their 2022 class, listed at 5'11", or 5'10", 205. Rated three-star transfer right now. Played in 10 games as a true freshman. Uh, was the team's third leading rusher in 2022. Going back to last year, only played in three games. Only had 19 carries for 110 yards and one touchdown. But before we went live today handful of minutes before, Steve Wiltfong tweeted out. Wilty. He quote tweeted this and tweeted out, former Ohio State running back Dallin Hayden. Hayden or Hayes? Hayden. Dallin Hayden talked with Colorado head coach Deion Sanders this morning. Love that. What a, imagine you hit the portal and your phone just rings and it's coach prime it's just some random 303 number and you hear that voice when you hit the green button you think coach prime has 303 number i mean he, he did just probably got just a, got a new phone he just got the new phone <laughs> yeah he's got it they can uh they can pay us to advertise what it is <laughs> um yeah that's uh that's true new phone new number 303 number gotta love it wait is it hayes or hayden see that's why <laughs> I think it's Hayden. It's that Hayden. sounds familiar. I think I yeah. might have said Hayes. You said Hayes. And the got, pit guy is yeah. Hayes. Oh, okay. There's a lot of names going around There's right a, now. Give Jake yes, a break. Please. Unless he mispronounces something, then we can all pile on him. No, no, no. <laughs> Next guy is Elijah Herring. Uh, Tennessee linebacker played in 13 games last year. Second on the team in tackles. Or led the team in total Who's tackles. This? Uh, this is Elijah Herring. Oh, from Tennessee. From Tennessee. 80 total tackles, four TFLs, half a sack, one pass defense. We've talked about linebackers a lot in this portal period. Uh, this guy was a 
2022 three-star recruit committed to Tennessee, played there the last two seasons. Um, moving to number one on my board. All right. Yep. There's another linebacker in here too, though. There is. But leading tackler at Tennessee last season in the SEC, yeah. Sign me up. For sure. Um, let me just try and find this tweet for this next guy. Here we go. Oh, actually, Damian, uh, Damian Martinez Damian might Martinez, be number one on yeah. my board. Come on. Where did where is Caden Proctor transferring again? <laughs> Alabama. He's going back. Wait. Are you sure he's not at Alabama right now? Yeah, he was at Iowa. So he tr officially transferred. He transferred in the last portal portal period, yeah. And now he's transferring back to Alabama. Yeah. I thought he entered and it was rumored that he was going to Iowa. Then he pulled his name out of the portal, stayed at Alabama. No. Now he's re-entering the portal. No, he okay, okay. went to Iowa, took NIL money from them, and that's why they're so pissed off. Gotcha. Yeah, ask Spencer about this. I'm sure he'd love to tell you all about it. Oh, he's so whiny. <laughs> Next probably too guy. busy crying about a call at the plate in the Rockies game <laughs> last night. Next guy is Keandre Lambert Smith. Uh, wide receiver from Penn State. He is rated a four star transfer. He was a 2020 four star recruit out of Murray High School in Norfolk, Virginia. Last year for the Nittany Lions, played in all 13 games. 53 receptions, 673 yards, four touchdowns. Um, maybe more importantly, uh -huh. offensive rookie of the year in the DNVR Madden oh my League God, on real? my team. No way. 110 <laughs> catches for 1,936 <laughs> yards and 26 touchdowns. Y'all need to play with sliders or something, bro. Um, also, I was able to acquire Dylan Edwards. Congrats. Uh, I said it on the show. Yeah. And then... <laughs> Our social guy, Ryan, who's in the league, heard me and then entered the talks <laughs> trying to outbid me for Dylan Edwards. This dude's never won a game in the league. I was like, don't bring Dylan Edwards to die on your shitty team. So then we were, we actually ended up working out a three-team trade. Wow. That's kind of you. Yeah. So I got Dylan Edwards. He got my running back. The other guy got mm -hmm. his running back. And then there were some other pieces in there. But uh, Dylan Edwards, future Madden League MVP. All right. Can't wait for the update this summer on Dylan's third NFL MVP award <laughs> and fourth consecutive rushing title. Um, with Keandre Lambert Smith, on three tweeted out Auburn, Georgia, Texas A and M, Colorado, and West Virginia have been in contact with him. Uh, on three has him rated the top available wide receiver in the portal, and he is a four star on two four seven. What would your reaction be to? The Buffs bringing in a, another wide receiver through the portal? I honestly don't know. Yeah. It's like... I really don't know. Part of me, I, I guess the simplest and easiest thing would be like, great talent was available, wanted to come here, you take him. Um, but at the same time, it's like, where are they envisioning this guy fitting in? Coach Prime told us on the Super Bowl... At the Super Bowl, his strength is recruiting the skill positions. These guys are just always going to want to come, though. For sure, and that's what I mean. Yeah. Is like, what is... What do you do with all that, that wide receiver talent? I'm not rooting against it by any means. Like, bring him in. Um, but I, I, I'm just curious. A lot of people will take that as an indictment on the existing players. Like, oh, somebody isn't living up to what they expected. That's why they brought this guy in. I don't think that's necessarily... Going to be the case if they were to go get him. Well, look, last year they rotated pretty frequently. I mean, we dealt with injuries, and you're going to deal with injuries again inevitably this season, probably at wide receiver too. Uh, we lost Zay for a little bit of time. Travis was hurt, obviously. Um, but then, you know, Chick had his flashes. Omari Miller definitely had his flashes. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Caleb was getting into the game late in the season. So we're going to see a lot of them, but yeah, it's going to be the competition is going to be extremely fierce. Totally, totally. And I, I, that's where I'm just like, man, if they were to bring in the top current wide receiver in the portal, like it's, I, I got to imagine it's hard to get a guy like that without telling him he's going to play for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Um, next player. 
Nikai Hill, Hill Green, Charlotte linebacker, was a junior last year, 6'2", 232. Uh, was a 2020 four-star recruit, committed to Michigan, eventually found his way to Charlotte. Um, he actually committed to, we've talked about this guy before, he committed to UCF this last peri portal period in the winter and then withdrew from the portal in February. Now he's back in. <laughs> All right. I think he's played at three schools, has he not? Um, I just see Michigan and Charlotte okay, on this right. page here. Do you remember him at Michigan? I think he played. Mm -hmm. uh, 2022 did not see game action. 2021 played in all 14 games with six starts, so yeah. 50 tackles. Uh, but last year at Charlotte, the team's second leading tackler was third team All-American Athletic Conference, was a team captain, played in 11 games, seven starts. Um, total stats here. Hello, Mama Tia. <laughs> uh, 73 total tackles, 9 TFLs, 2 sacks, 3 passes defense, 1 forced fumble. All right. They need a linebacker. I mean, he was recruited by Michigan, just had to go to Charlotte, was going to play at UCF with Drew for some reason, but now he's back in. So Again, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of talent out there. And it's funny, like, I don't know if last portal period there was a ton of running back talent, but we weren't really looking at it. And so now I'm like, now that we're looking at running back, I'm like, geez, there's a ton of running backs out there. I think it's better this year, this time this year than last year. I yeah. mean, last year. Well, yeah. last year it was Alton. Right. Um, there were the rumors, I think, about Trevor Etienne last year, but he didn't enter till this last winter period. Where'd he end up? Ole Miss? No, remember he flipped from Florida to Georgia. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he's already in trouble at Georgia. Oh, no. Yeah. But anyways, a uh, lot of linebackers, a lot of running backs. Uh, and the linemen are starting to pile up a little bit, too. Last guy. I'm we checking have today. Twitter to see if there's any new news. Things have been moving fast today. Yes. Uh, Jacoby Matthews, safety from Texas A&M, 6'2", 215. Uh, played in 11 games, made nine starts last year. His stats, 42 total tackles, half a tackle for a loss, half a sack, uh, one interception, and four pass breakups. He's currently rated a four-star transfer, was a 2022 four-star recruit, top 40 player in the class. All right. Um, and then one more thing. We talked about him yesterday. Arkansas offensive tackle Andrew Chambly is going to visit for the spring game. So nice. he'll be here April 27th. And then I think someone in the chat said he posted an offer too. So he's officially been offered at this point, if that's the case. Officially been offered and was a starter at Arkansas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's all I got. All right. For portal update. It's another interesting thing. I mean, you know, we've heard a lot about how much better the offensive line is. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the jobs of college coaches is to always be looking to improve. And, you know, it's just a, such an interesting world we live in where it's like you can have locked it down in spring ball, done a very good job mm -hmm. at your position, and then a better player or potentially better player can come available at your position and now you got to re re earn it all over again in fall camp. Uh, I don't think there's any problem with it. That's you know that's football. That's life. Uh, you're that's competition. Yeah, you're constantly competing to hold down where you are. Um, but it is just like kind of a crazy thing. It wasn't like this before. Right. You know, you might get a random transfer here and there late in the game. Now it's like. You can go through spring ball, figure out what you like and you don't like, mm -hmm. and go fix it all uh, in the spring transfer portal. Yep. Um, before we move on, a few things on recruiting here, and then we'll get to practice today. Uh, we talked about Alex Graham, the four-star safety out of IMG Academy. Uh, an insane amount of buzz from him yesterday. On three, Steve Wiltfong filed a prediction for the Buffs to land Alex Graham. On threes, EJ Holland, which is Michigan's recruiting insider, filed a prediction for Colorado to land 
Alex Graham, Michigan, was also in his top seven. Uh, Alan True of 247 Sports also put in a crystal ball. He's their national recruiting analyst now for the Buffs to land Alex Graham. And then I believe there was one more, too. So writing's on the wall. It's crazy. He also invented the telephone. <laughs> Big history guy here, huh? <laughs> I had to double check, honestly, just Google. That. I was like, was this, is that the electricity guy or the phone oh, guy? <laughs> uh, last thing, Micah DeBose. We've talked about him. Four-star, 2025 offensive tackle, 77th overall player. Eighth overall offensive tackle in this class. Visited Colorado yesterday. Posted pictures. Um, let's wait and see. All right. It's time to chill now. I think everyone could use a, a minute to chill. I think so, too. I would say the chat's been pretty good today. Alyssa? Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. Good job, chat. Uh, what's time to chill? Of course, that's the beer I reach for. Of course, that's the goat, man. Come hang out with us at the DMVR bar. We got it on tap. We got the silver bullets. Um, if you're hanging out at a golf course or whatever you're doing this spring, make sure it's with the Coors Light. Cold, crisp, refreshing. It's brewed cold, packaged cold, and always delivered cold. You can del get it delivered straight to your door also. Go to CoorsLight.com slash DMVR. Uh, celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And also, make sure you check out whatever the latest DNVR event is, including this week. No, no. This month, <laughs> we've got our draft party down at the Breckenridge Brewery Farmhouse. I don't know if I'm going to last until <laughs> that event before I get those wings again. They were so good. Dry rub hot wings from the Breck Brew Farmhouse that were amazing. And then... Uh, they also have like all sorts of beers on tap, but they also like do like cool little like beer cocktails sometimes. What was he brought up? The guy brought up like an unflavored seltzer that he said that you could flavor yourself or something. Yeah, so that's what I got when we were there last time. Basically, yeah. it was like they got they just got like a base seltzer with no flavoring in it, and then they add like fruit to it, mm -hmm. which was delicious. So uh, come down, hang out with us at the Breck Brew Farmhouse. That is the weekend of the spring game. So if you're coming up uh, on Thursday. Looking for something to do that night? Come hang out with us at the Breck Brew Farmhouse. Easily of any brewery you could go to in Colorado is the one I would recommend going to check out on, as I call it, campus. Because they've got a full beer campus yeah, there. Yeah, it's sick. Go check it out. Come hang out with us, too. All right, Coach Bartoloni talked after practice today. That's all we got. It was quick. It was informative. And we're going to watch it all right here. All right. Play Ready, it. Alyssa? Yeah. All right. Here we go. From your perspective, last year, now you have a new scheme. What was it about the scheme last year? It seemed like at a certain point it kind of stopped working. I know you had injuries and other things that came up. But from your perspective, what was that? How is it going to change this year? Um, you know, I mean, there, there was there was things last year um, that, that did work for us, and, and there will be some some carryover with that. Obviously, last year, depth, depth is an issue. There's there's a variety of things that, that you could point at, but, but ultimately it falls on falls on coaches and it, it falls on players to be united and, and get the job done. So I think the biggest difference you'll see is us basically this year just being a little slower and just making sure you know we're, we're getting lined up and we execute properly. We, we know to play. We know the assignment. And let's just go play fast. What have you seen from Shimon Mateo so far that is that you guys you obviously liked him coming out from the portal and then how has he kind of translated so far? So right right now with Shimon, I mean, it, you know, every day um, what we talk about is just developing consistency. You know, some days are, are better than others. Um, right now, every every facet of his game is is great. Um, he's just got to be more consistent catching the ball down the field um, and making contested catches. And that's overall as a group right now. Um, but, you know, he, he shows up, he, he works. Um, we just need to, we need to develop more consistency right now. But the flashes are there with him that you, you guys the feel like? The flashes are there, absolutely, yep. You've been around Shadour for a long time now. You've been around Shadour for a long time now. Where do you feel his game is at now? I mean, we talked about him being the number one pick in the draft. What have you seen? He's just, he gets better and better every single year. And, you know, I saw growth from him last year. Um, coming from Jackson State, I've, I've seen another jump this year to where he's at right now in the spring. Um, he he's he's the most accurate quarterback I've ever been around. Um, he throws a deadly deep ball, and you know you saw it out there today in practice. Um, he's able to create and get you out of bad 
really bad situations, throwing a move to all that good stuff. Um, his intellect is off the charts. Um, he's able to call out protections, get the offensive line right, you know, make uh, make checks on the perimeter that, that we got to. So there's just there's a lot that, that Coach Shermer is, is able to put on his plate. Um, but he's just gotten better and better every single year, and he's gotten smarter and smarter every single year. Um, especially being in this scheme this year, it's really going to pay dividends for him at the next level. Coach, where did the idea come from to move Savelle and Morgan over to your room? And like, was that their idea, your idea? And you know, how, how did that process go? Um, you know, I think just collectively um, as a as a group, um, you know, Savelle. I don't think it was one decision where you know they came up to us or it was like you know we kind of sat down as a staff and. We're looking at guys' strengths and where they could help this football team, and those are two big-body guys that, that play physical. And so, for whatever reason, um, it wasn't clicking on defense. So, um, again, what we're asking our tight ends to do, they, they got to be physical. They got to be able to run. And, you know, both those two guys, they, they carry traits, you know, that could transition to the tight end position. You know, Savelle Smalls, he was a uh, he was a receiver in high school and then transitioned to DN, you know, Morgan, same thing. He's got natural athletic ability. He's got natural ball skills. Um, but now for us this spring, it's just, it's basically about, you know, again, carving out those details um, specifically for the tight end position. Make sure we're, we're stepping the right way, hand placement, um, all that good stuff. And, and they're coming along, they're getting better and better each day. Do you feel like it's clicking for them on offense? I, I do. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, the, the plan is, is now, everything's about now. And so, um, you know, whether we're nine, ten practices in, like Savelle or Morgan, like it don't matter. Like I'm, I'm gonna get you ready to play this year, and that's non-negotiable. Um, and they're they're doing a good job with it. How about Passarella? How's he doing? Well, he's still, you know, he's still he's still recovering. So um, it's just it's it's week to week with him right now. So, but he's he's around. He's positive. He's great for the group. Coach, with the portal opening, how much uh, turnover do you expect out of your room this spring? You you never know. Um, I don't I don't anticipate any. Um, but if, if that were the case, then, you know, it's, it's next man up and we're always looking, we're always to, um, upgrade the roster and, and, um, elevate the tight end room for the university of Colorado. Thanks, Thanks, All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Pretty quick and easy there. Yeah. What was your big takeaway from that? Um, I'm not sure what's going on in the tight end room right now. That's my big takeaway. Okay. Um, we didn't get any players on the podium after coach, which a little unusual, I guess. Something um, or nothing. Play a little game of something or nothing. Is it something or nothing? Is that what you're yes. asking me? Is that something that there's no players? Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, I wish I could tell you and see what's going on, actually going on on the field, but... From what he said about Shaman Mateo, I mean, he said he's got to work on consistency, which, you know, that's what everyone's trying to work on, consistency. Mm -hmm. Travis is working on that. Shador's working on that. But um, I think that they're looking for more from this tight end room than what they've seen so far this year. Yeah. Uh, it kind of felt like that was the tone. Yeah. Um, and... You know, not to bring back bad memories, but that was a lot of the tone from this exact meeting last year. Yep. Um, when, of course, I was blamed for asking <laughs> Coach Brew about Zico. Uh -huh. uh, and he didn't hold back. Yeah. Uh, and just said he's got to get better. He's got to get more consistent. He's got to get stronger. He's got to block better. Like, he just yeah. rattled it off. Uh, and then a few, a few days later, Zico was in the portal. Mm -hmm. Um but I have kept an eye on who goes to the podium ever since I learned that Coach Prime is the one who makes that call. Yeah. Uh, and so you never know if there's just some sort of class complication or whatever. Right. Uh, so you don't overread into it. Yes. But it does go on your radar. And no players were brought to the, uh, the podium today. Uh, maybe that's something. Maybe that's nothing. We'll keep an eye on it. I mean, but I think you're right. They're Coach Bartoloni and everyone, you know, is pushing for a little more. That's that. It's at least what it sounded like from his uh, from his availability. Yeah, I mean, we kind of. I think we kind of saw this coming from this room. I think a lot of us liked what we saw from Shaman Mateo at Cincinnati last year. Um, and you look at what he did, you know, win that situation with that quarterback and you go, well, he's got Shador Sanders. He's going to have all these weapons around him. It's probably going to be a lot easier on him. 
But man, the rest of this room, I mean, Savelle Smalls, um, Morgan Pearson, these are guys changing positions. Yep. They're learning. Louis Passarello, coach just said, still working back from that injury that happened last year. After that, it's Antonio Posadas, Brady Kopetz, um, and that's it. Yeah. And we don't have a, gosh, I'm going to get the last name wrong. Sam Hurd? Sam, what's the Ohio Ooh, State kid's that name? That sounds right. Sam, Sam Hartman? Hart? Sam, no, Sam Hartman's the Notre Dame guy. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Sam, Sam Hart, I think is Sam his name. Sam Hart, is. yeah. Uh, we've got him coming in still, but um, and that's why you know we're going through this whole thing. And at the end of the press conference, I'm like, all right, coach, are you expecting anything out of the portal then? Or like going out of the portal because didn't sound too confident. And he said, you never really know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he kind of gave a coach's answer saying we're never going to – we're always going to be looking to upgrade our rooms, especially my room and stuff. As uh, you should be. As the coach. Right, as you should be. Um, but I just – I don't know. I got a, my ears perked up a little bit today just because of the way he was talking about the room. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I did forget – I didn't forget, actually. I was thinking about him yesterday. But it is easy to forget about Sam Hart. Mm-hmm. Not to be confused with lame country singer Sam Hunt. Um, but he came at such a weird time, you know? Yeah. It was like just a random day. All of a sudden, we had a commitment. Yeah, like a and, month ago. And I feel like it like slipped through the cracks a little bit. Yes. Um, but that'll be nice to have someone with experience alongside of Shimon Mateer, um to hopefully bring that the level of that room up a little bit. Yeah, and then Coach Bartoloni, when he was asked about Shimon Mater, he said, you know, we've seen the flashes, too. Um, he's, of course, mentioned that consistency, but said uh, he's just got to be better catching the ball down the field and playing better in contested catch scenarios. So, you know, the frame is there. The athletic ability is there. He looks big. Yeah, the speed is there. It's just a matter of learning this offense and putting it all together for him. And, uh, you know, hopefully he uses these last five practices, including the spring game and fall camp, to become the player we all think he is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's uh, it's going to be better than it was last year. And uh, as Coach Bartoloni said, like, that's a position that Pat Shermer wants to use. Yeah. Uh, and so they're going to be leaning on those guys to, uh, to step up, and they're going to have every opportunity to succeed if they do. Um, yeah, so stay tuned on tight end, too. Um, I know we haven't talked about any of them yet in this portal period, but we will definitely get to them. And I'm sure we'll have someone coming in at tight end to visit, probably commit at some point, too. A lot of people are uh, pointing out that we both have fresh haircuts. Yeah. Maybe there's a reason. Maybe there's a reason, huh? Maybe there's a reason. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Um... Unk was busy today. I didn't get to speak with him after practice. Couldn't really tell you what happened. He did text me. He said uh, quarterbacks look good today, uh, particularly the guys behind Staub. So mm. sounded Message like, received. Yeah. He said uh, that's basically what he said, too. He said they might have listened to our show on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it from today, though. All right. On to the Toyota chat. Yeah, oh, before yeah. we oh, yeah. do yeah. that, a uh, fun little video here from our guy Darius. It was mentioned a couple times in the chat, so I went and found it while we were playing the Bartoloni video. Um, this is Coach Prime today talking to the team in the way that only Coach Prime can. Oh, I haven't seen this yet. Let's go. I need y'all to turn it up today. I need y'all to turn it on today. I need y'all to separate yourself today and to be dog. You ain't in trouble, but when y'all get going, we all get the chain. You understand that? So let's go get it. Let's go flat out get it. And you know what today is? Portal day. <laughs> it's portal day. If anybody want to jump, jump. If anybody want to ride, ride. What y'all want to do? Ride. What y'all want to do? Ride. Did I hear somebody say jump? <laughs> jump or ride. What y'all want to do? Ride. What y'all want to do? Ride. Let's you gonna I, jump or ride, Jake? I'm riding until the wheels fall off, man. I kind of want that on a shirt. If you want to jump, jump. If you want to ride, ride. Love it. Again, shout out Darius. Reach the people. Go check out Reach the People Media uh, on YouTube. Watch the full video there. Darius kills it daily yep, with does. his content. Um, I loved that, though. Also, <laughs> did I hear somebody say jump? 
Absolutely no shot. <laughs> no one would have done that nope. publicly. Nope. Message, uh, message has been sent, though. We'll see if it gets received. Yep. All right, to the Toyota chat we go. The people. Let's get to 500 likes today. That's light work. Uh, right. Eric, in happier news, ready for July 10th when it is Colorado's day at the Big 12 Media Days. Cannot wait. July 10th. That's got to be right in the middle of uh, NBA Summer League. I wouldn't know. That Double. sounds a little earlier than last year's, right? I thought it was later last year. That's what I'm saying. This one's earlier than last year's. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we were like end of July last yeah, year. Yeah, it was brutal out there in well, Vegas. Well, it's still going to be brutal in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not ready to go back, by the way. No. Nope. I'm excited to uh, see the great people at Circa. Yes. But... Maybe I just need to stay there. Go from there to media days and back to my room. We should just call the after we get back the first three days off because someone's going to get sick and everyone's going to feel like shit because this is just what happens now when you go to Vegas. Speaking of, because I know everyone cares about my personal life and struggles. Yeah, uh, update us. I went to a specialist today because my ears still haven't popped. Um, I and all of you should be relieved to know it has nothing to do with wax. That's nasty. Sinus? Um, but he said that my, like, tubes in my ears are just, like, closed. Uh, so I got to take some, some shit to open them back up. Damn, dude. So there you go. It's been a saga here. Yeah, this is, uh, this is what Vegas does to you. <laughs> he said it was actually because I was, like, starting to get sick from Vegas. When I got on the plane, so everything was like already a little extra sensitive. Yes. Yep. No, that's exactly what happened to me. Mm -hmm. Coming back from Super Bowl, I was not feeling my best. Hit the plane ride, got in the air, so congested, couldn't yeah. hear, and yeah. for the next like month, I was like, "What is wrong with my ears?" Yep. Worst I was part fine. of <laughs> the whole time, every trip. Alyssa's built different. <laughs> she um, is. Or she just doesn't go as hard as us. I also went to bed one of the nights at like nine thirty. So. There it is. There it is. Yeah, I'm jealous. Um, yeah, I. Uh, the the worst part of what they told me today was, it's not going to be any. Qu there's no quick fix for this. So the saga rolls on. I mean, it could have been worse, bro. All right. Um, David, on to those who might be joining the Buffs is Jacuri Brown, the final QB we've been looking to add. That is the Miami quarterback who entered the portal today. Um. Like I said, I have no idea what's going to happen with the quarterbacks in the portal. It is not going to be easy to find a portal quarterback. Uh, and the, the guys that are transferring want to play. The guys, it, it might be a guy who is there late in the portal. A guy who transferred thinking he was going to be a starter somewhere and doesn't get that call. Mm -hmm. Then that might be when you... Uh, when you hit on the, the transfer portal quarterback. Uh, a lot of people talking about Mark Vissett right now. All I see is a deleted tweet. So I do not know. A deleted tweet? Yes. From him? From his account, it says post was deleted by the author. Well, what's, do you, can you say what it says? Or I, no? I don't know. It just says deleted tweet. That's what I'm saying. Can I see what you're looking at? I searched his name on Twitter. This guy's thing came up, and this is all I see. Uh-oh. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye. We'll see. Yeah, uh, Bill in the chat said stadium swim in July. We might have to actually have a stadium swim day this July. That sounds electric. We can only cross our fingers and hope that there's a UFC event. UFC yes. at stadium swim yes. is the GOAT. Uh, quiz says Cormani said he was fooled. Did Prime do something behind the scenes? Oh man, I'm not gonna get into this right now, man. No, like everyone's gonna feel a certain type of way uh, when they leave a job or a relationship or a school or whatever it may be. It's rare, maybe not rare, but it's at least fifty-fifty of someone's gonna have feelings about it. You know. Mm -hmm. 
Eric, again, how long is the spring transfer portal window? It's 15 days, closes April 30th. Um, what's next? What's up, Chris? Uh, Jake and Ryan, Thursday the 25th is DMVR draft night and Prime's got talent night. I have tickets to both. What should I attend? Ooh. Well, I mean, we're obviously going to be biased towards ourselves. I mean, yeah, I don't want to <laughs> – look, man, going up to Boulder is always a fun time. I don't want to deter you from that, but uh, yeah. we're going to have a blast on Thursday, next Thursday. Yes. I like that you got tickets to both. It's a hell of a move. Um, and by the way, your ticket – to uh, our draft party, yeah, comes with a burger and a beer. Oh yeah, it's great. So it's a fifteen dollar ticket, and that includes a burger and a beer. That's a hell of a deal. Whatever you choose, we will support you. But we hope that you join us at the draft party. We'll see him soon, I'm sure. Yes. Triple L, do you fellows feel that some of these younger players don't have the grades, so that's why they're going into the transfer portal? Uh, that'd be a risky strategy if that's the case, because I mean, you got to be eligible everywhere. Yes, but the answer is yes. Uh, when I mentioned the thousands of reasons why someone might enter the transfer portal, that is one of them. Um, there are guys. There's at least one player who has entered the transfer portal from Colorado who was not going to be eligible to play at Colorado, mm -hmm. uh, and so. I'm not exactly sure how it would work to go to a new school. Maybe you feel like you get a clean slate um, or, or what, but there is, that is a, a factor in all of this mm -hmm. is maybe, you know, some guys might have to go to a different level because they're not able to stay eligible uh, at yeah, a division one school. For sure. Fair enough. I mean, unless a player like straight up tells you why they entered the portal, you're never going to know exactly why. And even then, are they being honest? Right. Uh, Bad Mama C, can a school take a player back from the portal if they don't get an offer they want? Um, entering the portal is on the player. The player can withdraw in return, but the school is kind of just at the player's mercy. Is the player's scholarship, though, still there? See, I don't know. I think they have to be re-offered. Well, then, like, there's this Takario Davis guy at Arizona who's apparently been practicing with them while he's been in the portal this spring, which does not make any sense to no, me. No, no. It doesn't. Um, but I don't think that... Uh, I don't think that it's... Uh, the, the school can have a player back. Yes, they can welcome yes. them back if they want them. But I also think the school may have the right to not welcome them back if they don't. Absolutely, want them. of course. Did you see the comment? Someone said the the tweets back up. Uh, I've got it pulled up here. Is it official? So here is what Mark Vissett said. <laughs> Buff oh Nation. God, guys. Unfortunately, due to my visa status as an international student athlete, I'm unable to benefit from NIL deals while I'm in the United States. However, I'm excited to be heading home to Australia in May where I can participate in NIL deals. I would love to create partnerships, get out in the community, and give back. Reach out directly if you are interested or if you have any questions. Still on the team, he says. This sounds like the... Uh, False the, alarm. The Zach Eady situation, basically. So here's my question. Mark goes back to Australia in May. Yeah. He's in Australia. Yeah. Can we give him an NIL deal to like pop on the show? If he's in Australia, could he accept that? Or does it have to be Australian businesses? Mark, let us know. We ain't hard to find. Yeah. Hit the DMs, Mark. We'd love to uh, just participate in your NIL. Yes. Just so we can say that we were... We did it. A mate shirt? There you go. <laughs> Dennis, uh, have any portal players come into the buffs? No. You're not, we're not going to have commitments for a while, guys. I'm thinking it says, like, it says mate, and inside of the letters is the Australian flag, mm -hmm. but instead of red and blue, it's black and gold. Wow. Inside baseball What if we like, get it produced in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a lot of shipping costs. That was a uh, a scare there for a second. I was like, oh, man, we're going to have to go get a punter. Yeah. 
that was a. <laughs> but that could have been a rough. You one. post a graphic like I that. Know, I know. Everyone's gonna think you're transferring. I know. <laughs> no, nah, man, he's everyone's mate. He's one of the best punters in the country. Yep. We're good. Eric, again, do you think the problem with college athletics is the kids are not prepared for or maybe lied to about the business side of college sports? Coaches are always looking to get better. Um, I think it depends who you ask. There's a lot of problems with um, college sports. Yes. And lying is a big one of them. Everyone's lying all the time. Happens in professional sports too. And I was watching, uh, I was rewatching Coach Prime's interview with Gillian Wallow on a million dollars worth of game yesterday. And he said something that I literally say every time we open a new market when I'm speaking to the team, I say exactly what Coach Prime said to Gillian Wallow, which is what I say is often authenticity is at an all time premium right now. Mm -hmm. People value authenticity more than they ever have before. And the other side of it is, the opposite of that, it, you know, being fake has never been easier to see. Yes. People have become experts at yes. seeing when someone's full of shit. What Coach Prime said is uh, real is winning right now and fake is losing. Uh, and I actually think like one of the huge legs up that Coach Prime has over uh, everyone else in this business is he, he keeps it real. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, he, and he doesn't make false promises and he doesn't say if you come all you get this number or whatever if you come you're definitely going to start he presents them with an opportunity says if you want it come get it uh and i think that's refreshing especially for gen z man they know bullshit he said that too he said you know recruiting these kids they can see through it they they know um what they're looking for and they know how to see through the bullshit and listen to what jordan seaton said when he was on the podium about how all the coaches were always, you know, kind of like building him up and like, oh, you're so great, blah, blah, blah. And then Coach Prime just sits down and goes, you need to work on this. You need to get, uh, you need to get better at your core strength, uh, all this stuff. Like, that's real. Yes. Not just, oh, man, you're so good. You're going to be the next, you know, great Trent offensive Williams, tackle. Yeah. yeah. Totally. It's, uh, I really believe it. And, I, and it was cool hearing Coach Prime say that because it's one of the, my strongest feelings about right now. Um, but these kids are lied to a lot, and it's easy when you're young um, to be manipulated by people. But the transfer portal is going to make things different. Yes. Um, you, saw, you saw the stuff at Louisville, right? There's all these texts coming out today from kids who are entering the transfer portal from Louisville who are saying some guy, um, I assume like their, their uh, collective guy, oh, yeah. promised them all this money and then just stopped paying them and ghosted them. <laughs> Um, so there's all that stuff. And then there's another thing like to talk about how these, some of these kids aren't ready for money like this. There's a kid at one school. This is with a tweet that I read. I'm sorry. I don't remember who it was. He said there's a kid at a school getting paid 30 K in NIL. He was convinced to transfer to a school in California mm -hmm. to make 50 K in NIL because the taxes are so much higher in California. He actually oh ended up making God, less money, bro. but like those kids, they're not ready for that. Yeah. They don't know. So. It's this is why this whole thing is just such a mess right now. Yep. There's yep. no regulations. There's no there's not a lot of people kind of looking out for these guys and in preparing them for situations like that. Hopefully over time we're getting a little we get a little better and you know the, there's maybe even like courses should be offered to these kids in their freshman year of like right how to you know how to deal with this stuff. For sure. Yeah, so I don't know if I'd call it lies but there's a lot of like intentional like i guess some deception Deceiving, yeah. yeah like not exactly painting the whole picture withholding some information you know just not completely laying it all out there yep david asks or says big colorado fan from louisville kentucky jermaine lowell uh Lole would be great would be a great add to cud line Louisville just landed Javon Hadley. What can you tell me about him, man? Javon Hadley is a tough, tough basketball player. Yeah, he's a dog. Congrats to Javon. Uh, obviously, we wish we could have kept him, but uh, yeah. going to Louisville, big basketball school there. Um, big energy guy. He's just, he's just tough. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little undersized for his position, uh -huh. but good touch around the rim. Uh, shot it better this year. Was Made yeah. some big threes in yeah. games, but is just going to play way above his size. 
Yeah, he is a he's a dog, man. Coach uh, Coach Boyle mentioned countless times in press conferences about how Javon Hadley was really the only one who brought toughness tonight. Like, yep. said that so many times. So you're getting a tough player um, and a guy who keeps growing too. Like mm-hmm. when he, I can't remember where he went to community college from, somewhere in I think uh, Iowa, and then he came to Colorado last season, and. It wasn't, I guess it was a little bit of a surprise when he was announced in the starting lineup, like game one. Mm-hmm. But man, he really just became a mainstay for this team uh, all the way through this tournament yeah. run they just had. And I mean, him having the mask just shows you he's not, uh, not, afraid, yeah. to, uh, not afraid to, you know, stick <laughs> his face in there. Yeah, Mask Hadley is sick too. Congrats. Nine more likes to 500. Can we do it as we round out this super chat? Seven. Seven more now. Don Peasy, been riding with Jake and RK since Coach Prime arrived. not jumping in the portal. Ride or die. By the way, Bartoloni is my favorite coach not named Prime. I love Coach Brett. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. Uh, I don't know if I could pick a favorite. I do love me some, uh, some Coach Hart, though. Um, someone earlier also said, RK, I heard you're jumping in the portal. I will literally <laughs> never jump in the portal. No NIL deal in the world could uh, get yep. me to do that. Yeah. Well, four more likes. Can't end the show until we hit. F- oh, my God. We just jumped up like 20 of them. Let's go. <laughs> By the is. way, did you see the Theo Vaughn and Drewski talking to Roll Tide Willie? No. Oh, oh man. Lord. I can just imagine. You got to no. watch that, dude. <laughs> okay. It's so ridiculous. Is it on Theo's podcast? Uh, yes. And they're asking uh, Roll Tide Willie what, what it would take <laughs> to get him to... Uh, become a fan of a different team it's absurd <laughs> uh levi says i missed the cormani topic could you fill me in top of the show brother it's all right there yep all right we'll be back tomorrow uh some very very cool content coming up from us very soon yeah be uh, be ready tomorrow oh we're going early tomorrow okay. yes noon right 12 30 12 30 12 30 show tomorrow and then uh, two thirty Eastern, and we might have some more stuff coming out the rest of the day. Yep, and then we get Coach Prime on Thursday on the podium for day eleven of practice. Um, players to be named too. So stay tuned. See you guys tomorrow. Let's go Buffs. Let's go Buffs. <laughs> We all silly like the mayor. 